Hey, and welcome to Studio 411. I'm your host, Larry De Silva. We've got a, a great show for you today. It's always a pleasure when uh, we have a returning guest joining us, and uh, we will get to him shortly. Uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Dennis Dunaway, uh, best known for the uh, Alice Cooper group, as well as the uh, current band that uh, Dennis uh, helps to uh, helm, uh, Blue Coop. Uh, we've got a little uh, video just to kind of, for those of you who may not know Dennis and his escapades, a little uh, one-minute video just to kind of fill you in on what he has done and what he's been up to. So uh, before we introduce Dennis, why don't we take a look? Well, now that you have a better idea of Mr. Dunaway and his exploits, uh, we uh, we now welcome uh, returning to uh, Studio 411, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Dennis Dunaway. Dennis, I hear you're feisty today. Yeah, I'm in a feisty mood. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the mood you're normally in when you take the stage? Uh, on, on no, a, I, I think given? I just woke up late today. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, uh, Dennis, uh, he was telling me we uh, pleasure to catch up with him now and again via phone or email. Uh, Dennis tells me that you are you are as, as I feel the, the same way too, but for different reasons. Busier than ever, like almost like you you just 24 hours in a day isn't enough to to do all the things you need to do. Well, it certainly isn't enough hours to do all the things my wife wants me to ah, do. Ah, <laughs> okay. Well, that 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 would put you over the edge for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> busy is good. There you go. There you go. Uh, we've got a, a, a still here, just so we'll start off with this. Uh, the um, most recent uh, Alice Cooper or Alice Cooper Group uh, CD. Uh, this is uh, the uh, single that has been released that Dennis has co-written called "The Sound of A," and we'll start off with that. Uh, tell us the story. Uh, Alice apparently thought you had written this song many years ago. You filled them in on the true story. Well, that's that just shows you how forgotten that song had gotten because uh, way back in 1967, uh, Alice picked up an acoustic guitar and wrote, learned some chords and wrote three songs. And uh, two of the songs, uh, Shoe Salesman and Laughing at Me, we recorded on the Easy Action album, which was the Alice Cooper Group's second album. Uh, but the other song fell by the wayside and just was forgotten, like so many songs that we've had over the years that none of us remember. But this song I love, always loved, and about 20 years after the fact, I didn't have a recording or anything, but I could still remember it. You know, you can remember melodies sure. from when you were a kid. So, uh, But I couldn't remember it all, but, uh, so I just took what I could remember, and then I filled in all the blanks as faithfully to the what I remembered the original intention to be, and rewrote the song to the point where Alice didn't remember writing it. When he heard it, he <laughs> thought it was, he said, oh, great song, Dennis. I said, well, you wrote it. <laughs> and it sounded like he was really vehement about, no, you wrote it. He really had no, no recollection of writing it. No, he didn't, not until I... I, I don't, I'm not even sure that he's still convinced that he wrote it. <laughs> you didn't have that that uh, original manuscript with the uh, you know the handwritten notes and pencil, you know that. The yeah, but I do have uh, a notepad with the concept that the uh, the song was written about, the sound of A, and Alice had this concept of a futuristic. Uh, controlling government or whatever that con controlled the population with mu a musical note. And 
and you can see on this pad, there's no punctuation or anything. You can see he's writing. He can't keep up with his thoughts. He's writing as fast as he can. And it's all about this future. It goes on and on. But I still have that. It sounds like I'm, a, a, a sci-fi book uh, in the yeah, works. Yeah, right. <laughs> Isaac Asimov or whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's what the song is. It's, uh, uh, it's something that uh, was you know, forgotten. And there, there's a copy of the lyrics, almost on cue. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty good. And then the folks that played on there, of course, you and uh, uh, a gentleman that I met when we did the, you did that Barnes and Noble thing, uh, Nick there. Uh, Nick Didkowski yeah. plays guitar on it. Uh, also, Tommy Denander plays guitar on it. And uh, uh, Bob it's Ezrin. Got, yeah, Bob Ezrin yeah. plays Hammond organ. And, uh, and we've got Larry Mullen Jr. from U2 on drums. And uh, who am I forgetting here? Uh, Tommy Henriksen on yeah. guitar. So what we did is we went to Nashville. And uh, the studio is uh, made out of, uh, it's built in a church. And so we're in this giant room with all these stained glass windows. And I told Bob that I wanted to record it live with no overdubs except the lead vocals and the get lead guitar. So we were all set up, Bob Ezrin on Hammond organ, everything. And, and uh, we recorded it in this giant room. And, and the song sounds massive because of that. There you go. One thing before we get to the next clip uh, uh, in the production room, uh, that we have a shot of Bob Ezrin, maybe not from this session, but Bob playing uh, uh, guitar. He might even be your guitar, but I just want to get that if we can bring up that uh, shot of Bob Ezrin. Uh, is that the one? Yeah, there you go. So there's, there's the mastermind uh, along with you folks of the Alice Cooper group. So that's good. So that leads us into our next clip. We're going to listen to a little bit of uh, the uh, most recent Alice Cooper group uh, uh, single, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. The Sound of A, let's check it out. Back with Dennis Dunaway, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Alice Cooper Group, and uh, also uh, uh, let's talk a, uh, before I forget uh, his uh, book, marvelous. It's already uh, I can't even keep track how many editions plus audio book, and uh, it's been uh, last I talked to you it was being converted into German. Snakes, guillotines, and electric chairs: My adventures in the Alice Cooper Group, uh, co-written with. Uh, Chris Hodenfeld, Hodenfield, Hodenfield. I was, I was from close. Rolling Stone. From Rolling Stone. That's, so that's where you folks know that from. Absolutely. Dennis is so excited how well the book is done. Look, he's practically uh, like leaping for joy over here. So, that's the uh, day I got my book deal. Oh, it was. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's going to be released in paperback on August 14th. All right. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll look forward to that, and it's a, it's a great read. Uh, uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it for sure. All right, now let's see. Uh, now tell me the 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 sound of a, um, the Alice Cooper CD. Uh, was it uh, Paranormal Activity? Is that the the full CD? Paranormal is the name of the album, okay. and it's uh, Alice has this studio group, which is the other musicians that I just mentioned for Sound of A. Uh, and then there are a couple of songs by the original Alice Cooper group uh, that we did in Phoenix, Arizona. 
uh, Michael Bruce, Neil Smith, Alice and I, Glenn Buxton passed away in 97, so we had uh, other guitar players sit in with Michael Bruce. And, uh, and then there's also a uh, live CD with Alice's touring band. So it's a double, double vinyl, double CD nice. uh, with lots of good music on it. And now did I hear, is it the sound of A? I thought I read somewhere where something maybe was the, uh, uh, the, uh, the CD you just mentioned. Something put out on white vinyl or was I mistaken? Yes, no, the, the single of Sound of A will be released on white vinyl. And, uh, and then, of course, you can get digital as well. There you go. Uh, and then uh, the previous single was a song written by Neil Smith. That was the original Alice Cooper group, a song called Genuine American Girl. So uh, this is actually the second single released from yeah, the we've album. We've got the, uh, some of the tracks on this, uh, this thing that Sound of A. Uh, now you wrote, co-wrote, uh, what, a couple of those tracks, right? Yeah, Fireball, Sound of A, uh, You and All of Your Friends, and, like I just, and also the original group played on a song that Tommy Henriksen wrote called Rats, which is a three-chord basher that we had a lot of fun on. And then, uh, like I just said, Neil wrote uh, Genuine American Girl with Alice. There you go. And I didn't know this. Uh, Neil, I mean, my goodness, uh, besides still keeping his, his uh, hands and sticks in the business, became a, a, a very successful real estate uh, person as well. The rock and realtor, they yeah. call him. Yeah. That's amazing. But he's, uh, he's out in Phoenix, Arizona playing golf right now. So uh, he's, he's a snowbird these oh, days. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it picked a good time, especially with this kind of weather we're having. So. Ironically, yesterday, our, our weather was warmer than theirs. <laughs> there you go. And uh, that lasted 24 hours for sure. Uh, let's start with one of these outfits. We've spared no expense, of course, in uh, the uh, fancy uh, uh, clothes hanger there. So uh, uh, you're free to move around with your wireless mic. Uh, I, tell I, us think a it, I think it's fitting that it's a boom mic. But tell, tell us the a last about time I was here, uh, my wife Cindy was here with me, and we had brought some of the uh, costumes that she designed for the original Alice Cooper group. Well, she still designs, and these are costumes that she designed for the recent uh, tour that the original band did in England in November. We played five shows that ended with Wembley uh, Arena. Uh, but this one uh, I wore in uh, not Birmingham, in uh, Glasgow, and it's got uh, you know it's just it looks simple and it is, but it's uh, got you know your safety pins. There which you go. <laughs> people attribute <coughs> to punk, but I think Glenn Buxton and Alice started that w uh, before punk. Well, I don't know. The Stooges were gone yes. when we when we started doing that. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you know, we got to have a little bling here and there. <laughs> and then uh, here's another one that she did. That uh, it's easy to see that my wife is partial to sparkles. <laughs> so basically, she just has all of this uh, odds and ends uh, tchotchke. She loves, those, she loves yeah, those crystals, let me tell little, you. Little uh, moons and uh, actually uh, Saborski uh, uh, Crystals sponsors my billion dollar base. It's oh, really? made by the nice. Fender Custom Shop. Uh, but anyway, so that one. And, and then this was the one that I wore at Wembley. I think I wore it in Birmingham and Wembley. But uh, so it's a red jacket that uh, Cost like ten dollars, <laughs> and then uh, she put all of these uh, spider web uh, lace over it. I like and the back she of got it. That's the, very uh, sharp. Yeah, yeah, and then the back had a peekaboo thing where. Uh, so if I turned around, then you would see the giant spider there, uh, and then it's got a little. This see this little uh, attachment thing. Well, that's to keep the the front of the jacket from going over in front of my bass strings oh, and getting in the way. So, wow. so Cindy knows all of that kind of stuff, how, how short to make. You know, I wear my, my sleeves short because when I play bass, I like to have the skin against the instrument. So anyway, uh, 
She's See, I still just thought doing... I just thought your arms grew since I last saw you. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Had a chance to uh, visit with uh, uh, Dennis and uh, the rest of uh, his uh, band these days, Blue Coop, that keeps him busy when he's not. Uh, working with uh, with Alice um, uh, up in a, a lovely place called uh, the Clayton Opera House in Clayton, New York. And uh, what, a, what a marvelous place that was. We had a good time. It's, uh, it's right on the St. Lawrence River, right across the street. You could throw a, practically throw a, a rock and hit Canada from there. And uh, the town spent a, a ton of money to restore it to its original glory. And it wasn't a real fancy opera house, but it goes all the way back to vaudeville. And uh, they spent the money to do things like they went down through the wallpaper to the original wallpaper, and then they got a company to reproduce that wallpaper. So it's all looks like it did when it was yeah, brand new. No, it's marvelous. And uh, I, I think I may have talked to you about this when you were there, but there's something very unusual about that stage. It's at an incline. Yes, you did. Yeah. A steep incline out toward the audience to the point where if you're not used to playing there, and well, even if you're if you've played there before, you have a tendency to run up to the microphone and bump your lip on it because you find yourself putting on the brakes all night because you don't want to go off the front of the yeah. stage. After the show, he got a chance to walk on there, and all of a sudden you were you were showing me, and I could feel that it was like you were almost like, you know, imagine if you were having a bad night on stage. You felt like you were sliding into the pit of doom with the audience. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, we do the, the beetle bow at the end, and we almost lost Joe the first wow. time. Wow. <laughs> But uh, do you know why it's on the incline? I would think you I might. I think you told, well, you told me, I think it was, uh, was because, what, dancers, vaudeville dancers? Vaudeville dancers, dancers yeah. so the audience could see the soft shoe, see their feet. Yeah. And uh, when you're in the audience, not knowing that it's uh, at an angle, it's got this great, you're not sure why, but you can just see everything on stage extra well. And, and they used to have the footlights, so they wanted the the people to be sure. dancing and still be able to see them over the footlights. It's, it's a marvelous, marvelous facility. Speaking of the jacket that he showed us earlier, there's a shot from one of the uh, UK gigs that uh, they did in uh, late November, or early December 2017. And again, I can see, yeah, the guitar, uh, the jacket doesn't impede the guitar. There you go. I see, too, while you were there, uh, before we go to our next clip, uh, you uh, had a chance to do at least uh, some book signings while you were there. Yes, and uh, their fans came from all over the world. Uh, this particular one was in London, uh, and uh, there were these two German kids who uh, had bought tickets for, to see Alice in Germany, and then they found out that the original group was only going to be in uh, England, and it was too late. Uh, Wembley, they couldn't get tickets for Wembley, so they flew just to meet me at this event, and then they stayed up all night and went to the airport and flew back to Germany to see Alice's show the next night. Oh, gotcha, wow. I'm like, what? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. That's uh, pretty, pretty <laughs> impressive. And there's uh, uh, Dennis's lovely wife, Cindy, who uh, we, uh, we certainly uh, give our best to her. She couldn't join us tonight, but uh, uh, again, always, uh, always looking good, keeps this man in line and uh, keeps them well clothed, as you can see, with all the uh, terrific uh, garments that she uh, creates and designs. And on that note, we're going to check out, speaking of uh, Alice and uh, Dennis up on stage, we've got a shot of a tune, that um, a little video snippet of a video that Alice did with you guys. I think we even have a picture of Blue Coop with Alice uh, in the production booth there, uh, a song called Hallow Grave that you and the boys wrote and then got Alice to do a little vocal on, so that must have been a, a kick. Uh, Hallow's Grave was inspired by, I, one day I decided I was going to go for a walk to get inspiration for songs, so I went into New York City and walked down Fifth Avenue from uh, Central Park all the way until where Fifth Avenue now ends, which is Washington Square. Washington Square Park, I did some research, and I found out that at one point it was a mass grave for people from the yellow fever mm -hmm. outbreak, and that there's still like 30,000 
bodies under there. So that's what the story is about, and the song is about the, you know, people coming up out of the grave at night, and uh, you know, one of those uh, happy little ditties that I'm known for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, let's see. We'll, uh, we're going to show you a little clip of this uh, uh, Hallow's Grave, a uh, blue coop uh, featuring uh, Alice Cooper on uh, lead vocal. Uh, Dennis Dunaway joining us. Uh, let's take a look. Dennis Dunaway, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, joining us for the hour here on Studio 411. And um, uh, again, the, the Sound of A, a new, uh, new single. Uh, of course, Dennis's book, Snakes, uh, Guillotines, and Electric Chairs, My Adventures in the Alice Cooper Group. And we've got a, a couple of celebrities. I know the gentleman on the right now uh, holding, uh, holding one of your books. Shameless plug. Uh, tell, the, tell the folks in case they don't recognize who that gentleman, or both for that. Carmine matter. Apiece, of course, uh, who had played with everybody, Rod Stewart, Vanilla Fudge, yeah. uh, uh, Beck Bogart Apiece. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, he's done so much stuff. But that day he decided that uh, we were going to exchange books because he wrote one as well called uh, Stick It. Oh. <laughs> which I've read. <laughs> uh, but the other gentleman was Carmine's uh, Paul a drummer, Brent. just in case you're wondering. Huh? No, I'm telling the audience, Carmine is a drummer. Ergo, the name of the book, Stick It. <laughs> exactly. And uh, an amazing drummer at that. And the other gentleman was Paul Brenton, who's a super fan from Ottawa, Canada, who helps me do all kinds of special events for my book. There you go. I felt like when I pulled this still, I thought I was watching an old episode of What's My Line? I said, who's that guy on the panel on the far left? That's you either getting ready for Halloween or, I don't know, Alice is looking at you like, like uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? So I don't know. What, what was it going on? It was a, um, we were, geez, I, actually what was I'm going not even on sure there? where we were, but it was in England and it seems like we were at a place that was like, a, uh, had a, a, a one one ring circus or something like that and there were kids that were dressed up a little bit and I snagged a mask. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now the, uh, I see uh, Neil here and it's interesting Neil uh, in his younger days with, especially with the long hair and I don't mean this uh, I mean as, as a compliment I can see the Smith resemblance ergo for those of you who don't know Dennis's wife uh, Cindy Smith Dunaway is Neil's sister. And I can see, you know, a, a big family resemblance there because with the longer hair like she has, yeah, they, they yeah. look they look and a lot alike. And would you alike. buy a house from this guy? Well, <laughs> yeah. he's he's a little more like uh, trim or neat and trim, uh, whatever. Well, the word well, is. it's worked. He's but sold it, a lot yeah, of houses. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of when did he start that? Because I know uh, uh, in, in the, the I believe it was uh, he first got interested in it in the uh, early '80s, I think. Okay, so uh, not long after you guys kind of uh, broke up the uh, your uh, billion dollar babies. I think, that I you think guys when did. the band made some real estate investments, mm -hmm. that's when he got interested. Interesting. Here's a shot of the boys. I think you can figure out who's who, but I'll let Dennis tell you. Uh, I, I can see the snake influence there already. So Dennis, Dennis yeah, on the, the left. So the rock and realtor uh, had a pet snake, which we incorporated into the show. Uh, this is the late, great Glenn Buxton, guitar player for the original group. 
this is Michael Bruce, who uh, is on the new al mm -hmm. album with us, and he's uh, he lives in Phoenix, Arizona, but he is uh, responsible for most of our biggest hits for the original Alice Cooper group, even though everybody collaborated on pretty much everything. And of course, Alice, who's easy to recognize, and that's me over there. Well, that's yeah. Joe. There's there Joe Bouchard, who was uh, here not long ago, uh, talking about his new uh, new effort. And uh, then you've got a gentleman there, uh, Phyllis, in, uh, on who? Uh, uh, this is Richie Stotts from the Plasmatics, the guy that used to have a uh, blue mohawk with a chainsaw tattooed on the side of his head and wore a tutu on stage. So. We're trying to talk him into doing a gig with us, and he says that he's too shy. He's too shy, okay. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. He's, uh, we did talk him into doing the gig, and we had a lot of fun, but he's a great guy, and uh, this was at a fashion show in New York City, Tommy Hilfiger, that, that you know, that was, last, that was last fall, right? Yes. Yeah, last fall. I was on the phone with this gentleman, and all of a sudden, and I said, hey, you know, I, if I'm interrupting dinner or something, he goes, no, no, that's fine. We're just walking in Manhattan. And I said, oh, well, really? What are you doing there? He goes, oh, we're going to a fashion show. And I never forgot that. And, and then yeah. you and Joe and, and, and Joan and, and uh, Cindy and everybody else was there. I was like, I felt left out. I was like, wait a minute. These guys are all at a fashion show. Well, uh, being friends with the Hill figures uh, gets us a lot of invitations right, to right. some exciting things. You know, Fashion Week in New York City, we just went to some uh, sh runway shows, and it's uh, very exciting. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say for sure. Here's a shot of uh, at least uh, uh, one of the pieces of sheet music for, the, of course, one of their more iconic hits, Schools Out. Yeah, how do you like this this bass line? <laughs> Got that? That reminds me of a story I heard recently. I've had the, the pleasure over the last few years uh, to see The Who play a few times. And, and matter of fact, you I think you were at, at a, an, a, the last time I saw them, you were there uh, as well right, yes. backstage, I think. And uh, I, a story came out that I guess, um, oh my goodness, John Entwistle, one of the songs he didn't like to do I think it was Magic Bus because the bass line was just something similar for like four or five minutes and he just hated playing, I think it was Magic Bus, that record because he goes, I'm doing nothing here but playing the same note <laughs> over and over and over. So, but again, the life of a bassist sometimes, you know, I mean, is There's something to be said for simple parts. Yes. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't accuse uh, John Entwistle of that very often. Exactly, exactly. And this probably, for those of you who don't remember, are the age-old 45. This was, uh, the A side was Schools Out, and I must admit, I don't know the B side, Gutter Cat, though, that was on your... Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Gutter yeah. Cat starts with a, a bass part. Now, are, are, you, are you in the garbage can? Yeah, that's me aiming a, a pistol at you, and to this day, there are fans that, that can't find me on that picture. <laughs> I, I first I was having trouble and I said I think that's him hiding in the garbage can now uh, I asked this only because it, it, the thought dawned on my mind some of the blue coop videos that I enjoy uh, whether it's blue coop collectively or yourself you, you seem to have an affinity for for the uh, the 45 caliber is that like something from your upbringing that you, were you raised around uh, pistols or guns or is that just Hmm, I don't know. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and then I saw this and I said, hey, he's got that gun again. <laughs> well, I, I came up, I, I was raised in a hunting family. There you but go. I, I don't have any obsession with it or sure. anything. It's kind of like, you know, uh, I don't smoke, but if I was in a movie, smoke looks good visually. Yes, so yes. I think a pistol kind of lends to lyrics somehow. There you go, absolutely, absolutely. And also I have a lot of things that are social commentary. So it might sound like I, like I wrote a song called Little Kid with a Big Big Gun. And uh, it's, uh, it's got this, you know, it's got this sarcasm in it where it really is a, a statement about, you know, gun control. And, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Randy Newman. Randy Newman had short people. 
you know, but it wasn't him really making fun right, of short people. Right, but it people. caused a major uproar, it was him, you remember, yeah. It ma a ma yeah, a major which, uproar right, because people, people didn't understand didn't, right, that he exactly. was actually criticizing people that had those kind of yeah. prejudices. Yeah. So, you know, I like that kind of uh, angle in, in songs. It's, uh, it's a fun way of getting, of getting out a, a message without getting too heavy about it. Dennis Dunaway joining us for the hour here on Studio 411, uh, the new uh, Alice Cooper uh, single release, The Sound of A. I don't know why I keep wanting to say The Story of A. Either title is good, but it's The Sound of A. Uh, and uh, here, here's the uh, the realtor. He must, is he trying to sell, sell you a condo? or <laughs> That's uh, Mr. Neil Smith, Cindy's brother. Dennis we had gone to uh, the uh, premiere of uh, Super Duper Alice Cooper, the, the film, and this was at the Tribeca Film Fest. Alice was there, and, and Neil and I had gone, and we were having a couple of uh, uh, drinks together and hanging out, and somebody came up and took a shot. Now, I don't think we, we talked about this when you guys were here a couple of years ago, but uh, how did that feel, in other words, or, or maybe because you were so enamored with his sister that it wasn't even a thought, did you look back and say, wow, that, did it seem kind of weird that you're, you're, you're kind of like falling for your bandmate's sister? Uh, you know, I married the drummer's sister. <laughs> you think that's easy? That is not easy. And uh, we were treading, you know, uh, kind of secretively for a while because we weren't sure how anybody in the band would feel about it, especially Neil. Uh, and uh, uh, it worked out. It worked out fine. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I should have asked you before we started, but I, I'll bring it up because it was said almost kind of matter of fact and I was, I was dumbfounded. Uh, Cindy at one point briefly dated Roger Waters. Is that correct? Uh, not Roger. It oh, was oh, not it's, Roger. Uh, uh, David Gilmore. David Gilmore. Okay. Wow. Well, still, I mean, that's that's pretty uh, heavy heavy hitters. Uh, yeah. How actually, did that, I, just, I assume that was uh, you guys weren't on the outs. That was just like pre. -dentist. No, this this was before Cindy oh, and wow. I were an item. Okay. Uh, but I ran across some pictures of this that nobody's ever seen uh, other than Cindy. But it's. Uh, uh, pictures of Cindy and David Gilmour. Actually, I think Roger Waters is with them that day, but but Cindy and him weren't going out. But yeah. they had gone to the beach in Malibu, and I've got these photographs of her and Cindy with her friend Linda, with uh, Rick Wright of the the keyboard mm -hmm. player for yeah. uh, Pink Floyd. And these pictures are double exposures, which I don't think they did intentionally, yeah. but they all look like perfect Pink Floyd album covers. There you go. Uh, but she's known, I mean, uh, Cindy's known, uh, you know, the Yardbirds she's been friends with for many years. Uh, she knew Dusty Hill of ZZ Top when she lived in uh, Dallas, Texas, before she came, before we became the Alice Cooper Group. And, uh, you know, and then uh, ZZ Top's very first tour was opening for the Alice Cooper Group, wow. a major tour. That's amazing. Their first major tour of America. So That's amazing. So things, you know, when you're a traveling musician, especially as many years as we have uh, done this, uh, you start running into a lot of people all over the place. A lot of things happened on the, this uh, UK tour that we did recently. I ran into Stephen Van Zant in the lobby of a hotel early in the morning. Like, wait a minute, what's he doing here? And he's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> small world, isn't it? Speaking of small world, there's Dennis shamelessly plugging his book again with Ace Freely of Kiss fame. Look at that. Huh? That's pretty, pretty impressive. It's like I'm, I'm name dropping for Dennis. It's amazing the number of people that you have come across in your life. I think life. Ace had a, a death grip on that <laughs> copy of the book. He wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna give you, it back. You never, I was gonna give it to him anyway. Him again. You never saw it again. <laughs> On that note, we're going to t check out a, 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 actually a full-length video for your amusement. Uh, great tune that I love uh, that uh, Blue Coop does that uh, Dennis and the boys uh, or some faction thereof wrote. A great song called More Cowbell, which uh, I think you'll enjoy. And uh, let's check it out. Uh, Studio 411, Dennis Dunaway, our guest. We'll be right back. You got a
We're back. Dennis says he has something to say about the song. Go ahead, Dennis. Well, um, I, I was pushing Joe and Albert to do write a song more, Cowbell, because, you know, the, the Blue Oyster Cult uh, skit on S Saturday Night yes. Live was such a, it still, you know, has legs of its own. And they didn't uh, hem hawing around and on and on. I said, I said okay, I'm going to write it. So we're up in Canada, and it's New Year's Eve, and we have a gig that night. And so I told Albert, I said, you know, I went ahead and wrote this song, and I played it for him. He said, we got to do that. I said, yeah, I've been telling. He said, tonight. I'm like, tonight? What? <laughs> so we ran over the song twice at Soundcheck, and that recording is like at, at midnight and in front of a live yeah, audience. Yeah, it sounds almost like it was like <laughs> New Year's Eve. I mean, the crowd was really pumped into it, obviously, after the show you guys put on. That, by the way, is what on the Million Miles More uh, CD of Blue Coop. And yeah, it's a great, great track. And I wanted to play when you guys were the last time. And then I found this uh, terrific uh, video, uh, probably not that session, but another live one. And I said, well, we'll we're going to we're going to have to squeeze that one in because it's, it's a really good. It's a fun song. I'm sure uh, you, you guys play it all the time. We did a British tour and one of the shows was in Corsica uh, and um, we played at the Opera House there, and uh, it was it was such a wonderful thing because the town has Bastia has a jazz festival every year, and all these people come mostly from France, but all over the world. And every little place that you go on the side of the mountain is the town, and every little place you go in is this great jazz music. And, but like many things, the the town found that there's they got concerned that they want to get young people involved in this music festival because they're, the, you know, the, the following wasn't quite uh, right. passed on to the younger generation. So they decided they would bring in a rock group. And we were the first rock group to play at the jazz festival. And to promote it, to get young kids all involved in the thing, we played the Opera House, and we were on television. Every time you turn on television, we were there. And this thing had four tiers. And so we got this kid to jump up and play cowbell on more cowbell. And there's a young kid in front was so excited. <laughs> Come on up. Well, the problem was he was so excited that tempo meant nothing. You oh, know, we're wow. doing <laughs> dun, 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 and he's doing ding, ding, ding. <laughs> No, no musical uh, rhythm, as they say. <laughs> Here's a shot of uh, Dennis along with Neil on the right. Of course, uh, Mr. Alice Cooper on the left. And uh, I think that's our cameraman, Zach, over on the far left with the camera in his hand. I think he <laughs> snuck in there. <laughs> but uh, just you guys look like you have a great time. And again, This was in Dallas, Texas. Uh, oh, at that uh, record I did a book store. Event. Yeah, 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 a good records. Yeah. Chris Penn, the yeah. owner. Uh, and I organized it, but Alice was a surprise. Uh, he, they cut a, uh, an opening in the back behind the stage, and we started playing, just Michael, Neil, and I, and then on the second song, Alice walked out, and all the people in the, in the record store, both level upstairs and down, of yeah. course, had... This, this shot I love, uh, it just kind of struck me as this is like a batch of bad recreational drugs. So I just thought, no, what's going on with Alice there? <laughs> but uh, you, you look like, you know, now I know why you and Joe as well and Albert, you love like Halloween and, and vampires as, as I don't need to tell you, you know. And you just have a look. Your eyes are like piercing. Uh, you know, it's no wonder well, you have to hide them with glasses because you, you could almost see through people with those well, eyes. This is likely, uh, we would do a photo session. I don't know if this was Richard Avedon, but, uh, but we would do photo sessions. And you know, you do a lot of pictures. And then once you think you got what you want for the commercial thing, then we'd do somewhere where we'd say, OK, let's, let's do a weird shot, right. and let's do a funny shot. And, and that was that probably was one, one of yeah. the outtakes. I'll say. And then the, here's a great Robbie that's Krieger. Right. Robbie Krieger of The Doors, a longtime drummer of The Doors. Uh, a guitar again. player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, nice guy. And uh, he played uh, on some of the tracks with uh, Blue Coop. There you go. He worked with Albert way back in the early days. And the Doors hung out w with the Alice Cooper group in the very early days. When we first became Alice Cooper, before we even had a record deal, the Doors would come over to our house. And one Halloween, we had a seance. 
<laughs> with uh, it was uh, Robbie Krieger and John Densmore and uh, Jim Morrison. It was uh, uh, David Crosby. Uh, oh wow, the A list. Uh, uh, Alvin here. Lee from Love. Yeah. Uh, uh, Paul Rothschild, the producer, yeah. and people like that. And we had a seance. I asked Robbie if he remembered that. He said, there were a lot of seances. <laughs> I don't remember any of them. <laughs> real, real quick, because I want to get this shot in. You have a prop there uh, uh, over by the table. Uh, oh, yeah. Me. No, the, the prop there, do you still have it? No, the, the, uh, the, uh, the rope there. Show That was from, uh, from back in the day on one of the tours. Yeah, this was from... Yeah, here's the wire. So, so Alice wasn't really hanging by the neck. Uh, this actually, he wore an uh, outfit that supported his body. Mm -hmm. And when when we put the noose around his neck, we made sure that this wire was attached to the back of nice. his costume. And uh, this is one of the, we had, I think, three different ones. And this is one of the original ones that we used on the killer tour. But uh, the whole concept was that Alice would be uh, an inmate uh, for uh, killing a bad nurse. And then he would have to be punished for that. And so we would hang him, and every lightning would be thunder and lightning and everything. And all of a sudden, the lights would go on white, and we would come out wearing all white. And Alice would have a white tuxedo, and everything was fine with our hero was fine, you know, and <laughs> confetti and balloons and everything. So the the thoughts that went into what your escapades with the band, I, I are amazing. You know, I mean, you guys put a lot of effort into into your your concerts. You know, people don't uh, the younger uh, people. I don't know if they they fully comprehend. You know, back in the day, what bands did a well, lot. Well, the began the 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 band began with Alice and I just being high school friends. You know, I was sixteen and he was fifteen or something like that. And uh, and when we decide and I was an artist. That's all I cared about. And we also ran long distance and we were uh, journalism. So. Uh, we became very uh, close friends, and when we decided to do the uh, 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 band, we decided we were going to incorporate theatrics. So that's where it came from. Sure. There's a recent shot of uh, the band as uh, we know them now. Again, obviously minus uh, the late Glenn Buxton. But uh, again, I, I give you guys a lot of credit. Uh, a lot of times when folks pass, sometimes things you know tend to fall apart. I mean, you see bands like the Eagles now. Glenn Fry passed away in 2016. Apparently, they found his son can actually sing like the father did. So now they're going back on tour, and you know, countless other bands. You know, the Doors in various stages tried to you know continue. On with without Morrison, which that that was you know uh, that's kind of like trying to continue the Stones without uh, Mick. You know what I mean? It's really right. that was very you know, difficult. Yeah, Even though they, I saw some great shows that they did with other singers. Right. You know, Queen uh, or other you people. You know, the, I think the reason that it's the chemistry still works with us uh, after Glenn's passing is that he was so close to us. He's kind of there anyway. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, speaking of close, uh, to the right of Alice, you have an uh, actor, comedian, as well as singer, uh, uh, Jack Black, with Dennis on the left. And uh, I'm sure he's probably like in awe looking at you guys. Jack, uh, well, exactly. Yeah. He was telling <laughs> us how wonderful he thought our band was. And I had just said to him, yeah, but we weren't nearly as tenacious as you. Oh, wow. There you go. Tenacious D, <laughs> And that's I guess, the look uh, I got. <laughs> tenacious D, uh, the Jack Black's uh, band when he's not making making a big budget movie. So again, about that, that must have been a real uh, thrill for him to uh you know, see you guys. And uh, there was a movie, and I, right now I'm blanking on what it is. I was going to bring a copy of it. But, you know, your songs, you know, just, uh, again, w which is good not only from the financial standpoint, but just permeate a lot of movies that I've seen over the last 10, 20, 30 years. You know, you hear School's Out, or you hear, you know, I'm 18. I mean, it's just it's great to, you know, introduce new generations to the music. And now with this, so, such as one of these shots from the uh, UK tour, I mean, uh, there's that red jacket it again. Alice is looking pretty spiffy too, and uh, you know it's great. It's great. Must and hopefully you guys will be doing more of this stuff. Uh, well, we'll see. It's it's like you never know. Uh, uh, whenever we do something with Alice, usually it's like 
I wake up in the morning, my phone's ringing off the hook, and everybody's like, wow, cool, I'm glad you're going to be. I better call Alice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They keep their cards close to their vest. But uh, we have so much fun, there's bound to be more things. Sure. Dennis Dunaway, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer with the Alice Cooper Group and also his uh, current band, Blue Coop, joining us for the remaining moments here on Studio 411. Uh, real quick before I forget, because uh, I hope to get you guys on at some point, the three of you. Real quick, uh, you're working on a new Blue Coop CD, so the ideas are flowing. You're yes. writing like mad. Yes, I'm very excited about it. Uh, Joe and Albert are so prolific. Uh, that uh, we always have, our biggest problem is trying to pick which songs of the batch that we manage to come up with, which is always, you know, okay, let's write an album, and then we write 50 songs, <laughs> and then pick which ones okay. we want. It's always better to do more than you can always, you know, s save a few aside, you know? It's uh, yes, yes, <laughs> but, but I'm very excited about the, uh, the new direction that we're going in. Good. Here are the, as I call them, the men in black. This must be from about 20 years ago. Uh, the late Johnny Cash along with Dennis and, uh, you know, the, both in black. A surprise, surprise. This is, this is actually a cardboard cutout of Johnny. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> is? is at oh, the, that man. was at the, uh, the me, Johnny oh, Cash Museum. Wow. Which is really amazing. I highly recommend if you make it down to Nashville, go to the Johnny Cash Museum. It's the only museum I've ever been to where just about the time I thought I'd seen enough, it was over. Wow. You know, it was a perfect amount you of had, cool I, stuff. You had me fooled. I thought I was saying, well, man, he met Johnny Cash. That's impressive. <laughs> oh, well, more stories. I can see another book on the horizon. Uh, real quick before we head uh, and, and close out the show, uh, Alice, uh, second from left, John Lennon, May Pang, who, of course, Dennis is, uh, is pretty good friends with. So much more to continue. So uh, we, uh, we look forward to having you back again. We, as always, we thank you for not only your friendship, but also for indulging us here and, and bringing your uh, stories and your anecdotes to, uh, to our uh, stage. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Larry. I always have fun on your show. Absolutely. The same here. And we're going to leave you folks with a, uh, another track from uh, Blue Coop, another live cut. Uh, they're doing their rendition of the Alice Cooper iconic hit, I'm 18. All right. And we thank you for joining us here on Studio 411.